Here is a very, very funny fella, my good friend, and so very beautiful, Mr. Norm Crosby. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, how about the kids on this show? Aren't they beauteous? Really. I think this is, this is without doubt the most voluptuous conglomeration of feminine pulpitness that has ever been put together. I mean it. it it's just a, uh, if you look for an epitome of conjuncture, this is it. And they are so demure and so voluptuous and so adhesive and so protruding. It's beautiful. And did you notice how Dean treats them with such tenderness and affliction? It's something to see. It really is. They, they literally fling themselves at his incumbents, and he stands there, and he's so suave. He's so nonchalant. He just, he's got a certain inner flux that excretes from this man that's, there's an aura of marination that radiates out of him. I don't know where it comes from, but he's got a certain continental savior fear that, that a lot of guys could learn from him. Too many fellas don't have that now. I mean it. Men don't have that kind of apathy for women like Dean got. <laughs> Men today push women into the subjunctive. They give them retard. They do not raise them to the pinnacle where they're supposed to go. <laughs> it's been too long that women have lacked this kind of beautiness. I really mean it. They deserve more. They deserve it. Since biblical times, women have suffered abuse, abuse at the hands of men. From Pope Gregory, when he built the, you know, the garrison. And uh, from, from uh, King Solomon in Ruth 1, when the king said, don't tell Ruth 2. You remember that? Prim there was a man, 300 wives and no children. He used to walk around saying, what's the matter with them girls? Because they were unbearable. You know, they... <laughs> the primitive guys, let's go back a little bit. Forget about now, hence. Let's go back into the future. The, the, the Neithiorandral primates. I'm talking about the misanthropes, the guys that, with the torn clothes and the beards and the bare feet. They used to live in caves. Now they hang around on the strip. You know, they... <laughs> they treated women awful. They traded women. They bothered them like cattle, like... Uh, Oh, like three goats would bring one strong girl. Of course, in those days, girls were much stronger. You know, that's before they had hexachlorified and depilepidary. <laughs> uh, or like a horse would buy two girls, which is kind of unusual because most horses don't have that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> about the guys that, that do something in the complete opposite of what we're talking about, there's a different thing that men put women on a pedestal. That, that's a wrong. That's a wrong wrong. Men do that because they, they're scared. They raise a woman to exultion, and they put her on a pedestal. <laughs> ladies, ladies, can I tell you something? We will talk honest. If any man ever walks up to you and says, hey, you want to go on a pedestal? Tell him, forget it. I ain't going to no pedestals. And don't go. Because a woman don't belong on a pedestal. A woman should not go on a pedestal. A woman has a purpose. All women have a function, a noble, magnificent, beauteous function. You ladies know what it is. I know you know. You know your function. It's to proculate the race. This is a woman's function. I'm serious. If anybody ever walks up and says, excuse me, madam, what's your function? Tell them, proculate the race. That's my function. And a pedestal is not the place. You could slip, you could kill yourself on a pedestal. The great men of history believed this, were not ashamed to treat women with chivalrousness and courteousness. When Cleopatra first saw Caesar making the salad, and she walked right up to him, and she made a courteous, and she said to him, Ave Kaiser, which means, hey, Julius. <laughs> and he bowed unto her, and he said, fair maiden. He called her a maiden because she never won a race. <laughs> <laughs> How about Christopher Columbus? Was not ashamed to go to a woman and ask her for help and ships and a couple dollars for himself. <laughs> and this was a brave man, one of the bravest men in all history. Fearless. Christopher Columbus did not know the meaning of the word fear. He didn't know the meaning of the word quit. He didn't know a lot of words. He couldn't talk English. <laughs> How about the great ladies of history, Lady Godiva, who rode down the street in Coventry, England, devoid of all accoutrements? <laughs> Nothing. Just long blonde hair all around her. And the townsmen stood on the sidewalk going, Behind 
now you're beginning to understand. In the days of Madame Pompadour, now the days of Madame Pompadour were Tuesdays and Fridays <laughs> till six o'clock. You know, holidays was 9.30. But this was a great woman. She was a magnificent attraction at court. Of course, they never proved nothing, but she always, <laughs> always, always combed her hair. I like you people, you make me laugh. She, she always combed the hair in the pompadour. Like she would go to a barbecue or a party, she would say, uh, excuse me, I have to go comb my hair in the pompadour. You know, that was before they had indoor plumbing. And, <laughs> oh really, these are not things I make up. These are proved fallacies. Whatever I tell you, <laughs> you learn. You learn from things like this. The opera La Boheme teaches us how a man should treat a woman with tenderness. The second cadenza of La Boheme, when Labo couldn't stand it no more. And she, she stabbed him right in the ventricle. And he got rigor motion of his diathermy tract. That's right, look it up. She stabbed him with a hard roll. <laughs> and he died from wheat germ. Well, she fled because she didn't have no discipline. See, that's something else you have to understand. I'm not, I don't pick because I, I love ladies. I am a champion of your faith. But women do not have discipline. Men have it. You notice how Dean stands? So blaze about the whole thing. He just, he just stands there and all these women traipse around him and he doesn't even move. This is discipline. Plus the fact that he knows in his heart that Jeannie is watching. <laughs> See, discipline. It's something, I have to explain it. You people travel. Everybody here has been to a hotel at some time or another. There is a little sign on the wall of every bathroom in every hotel in the world that says, please put the shower curtain inside the tub before you take a shower. It is a simple request. Women do not do it. They just don't. Men do it because we're trained. A man sees that sign, instinctively, it goes. <laughs> Women are neat and clean, they are sanitatious, they are lavatory, they put on poof and sludge and spray, economy size, uh, dippy do and rinse off and flake up and touch out and uh, uh, mascara underliner and uh, burnt sienna with the frosty peach that they tip on and, and spit so it makes a line. They do not put the shower curtain in the tub. We do it. Believe that, we do it. Takes us 10 minutes sometimes to get them hooks off, but we do it.